Lancelot Capability Brown was undoubtedly Britain's most important and influential landscape designer of the modern period. Brown designed between 170 and 200 landscapes right across England in the second half of the 18th century, including important work at Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire, Chatsworth House in Derbyshire and Harwood House in Yorkshire. Brown was born in 1716 in Northumberland in the far north of England and as a young man trained to be a land agent like his father on the local estate. But in 1741 he moved south to Stow Gardens in Buckinghamshire to take up the position of gardener and a year later he was promoted to head gardener. Brown stayed at Stow for a further nine years before moving to London in 1751 and setting himself up as an independent landscape designer. The second half of the 18th century was one of unrivalled success for Brown. In 1764, he was appointed Royal Gardener at Hampton Court Palace, west of London, and throughout the 1770s was taking on new commissions all the time. It's recently been estimated that his annual turnover in the 1770s in modern money was the equivalent of around £60 million a year, and his profits could have been as high as £20 million a year. Brown's success was due to the new style of landscape that he was creating. In the early 18th century, landscapes had been dominated by geometry. Avenues, terraces, canals of water had all been based on geometric shapes. Even the shrubs had been clipped into these strict geometric shapes. Brown, in contrast, suggested a much more naturalistic landscape. At the heart of Brown's landscape was the house. But rather than surround the house with barns and stables and other buildings, the house now stood alone and those buildings were some distance from the house and hidden from view by planting. In front of the house was lawn, grass, which came right up to the house and spread away down gentle slopes. This grass was punctuated by clump plantings, again irregular plantings of clumps of trees. No more the formal lines of avenues, but much more naturalistic plant. In the middle distance, Brown would always create a body of water, a lake. This provided light and movement in the landscape and a focus of the, for the view from the house. Beyond the lake and more clump planting, Brown would surround the perimeter of the landscape park with a perimeter belt of trees. And this provided a barrier for those looking into the park but also provided a secure and private environment within the landscape park itself. So these were the key elements of the Brownian landscape. They are simple, but they were so different to what had been popular in the first half of the 18th century. The second thing that Brown did that was very innovative was his business model. Brown got his name Capability Brown because when he went to a new site, he would ride around, often for no more than an hour, and then present the owner with his capabilities, his, his vision of improvement for the landscape. Brown would then prepare a plan, an agreement would be reached, but then Brown would put in place a foreman, a trusted member of his team who would carry out the work. And this freed up Brown to then go and develop new contacts and start new commissions elsewhere. In this way, Brown was able to run several projects at the same time hence his large income and hence his great success. Some of those foremen that Brown had put in place would also become landscapers in their own right and would copy the style of Brown's landscape, thus spreading Brown's style and success throughout the country. Brown's legacy, however, was confined to England until the 19th century. Because Brown didn't write anything down, his ideas were not widely known in continental Europe until the 19th century when new writers such as Humphrey Repton and John Claudius Loudon started writing about Brown and his legacy from the 18th century. And so Brownian landscapes, or English landscapes, began to appear in northern Europe in the mid to late 19th century. Brown undoubtedly has a lot to say about the English landscape. His idea of landscape is very much what people often imagine a British landscape to look like around a country house. But his legacy is now being reinterpreted because of the accent, the emphasis it places 
on naturalistic planting and nature as having a place in our open spaces.